Hello everyone, welcome back to Keeping It Real with Nick. Here we have Madeline Brown. She's an actor, volunteer, and she worked in theater for several years. And we'll get back to her after this commercial break. Hello everyone, welcome back to Keeping It Real with Nick. Here we have Madeline Brown. She's an actor, felicitator, and volunteer. Welcome, Madeline. Thanks for having me. No problem. Welcome to Keeping It Real with Nick, and that this will be in the disability channel today. So let's kick it off. Let's do it. So, Madeline, how old were you first discovered your love of theater? You know, I don't have an exact age, but it was definitely around elementary school. I did the odd class, and then yeah. I think the one defining experience was for a talent show in elementary school, I recited a poem. It was a Shel Silverstein poem. Yeah. I don't remember the exact title, Yeah. but it was all about how, it was a character talking about how sick they were and how they couldn't go to school, and then at the very end it became clear that they were just making it all up. So I had this like lovely little like dressing gown that I wore, and it was, you know, I spent a lot of time rehearsing it and staging it. Yeah. And I just had such a delight when it came to actually performing it that I kind of realized it was something I was interested more in just beyond the occasional drama class. And then from there, you know, I went on to do productions in middle school and high school. Ah, and how did that work out for you? I, I'm still doing it, so I oh, guess... So, so, you're, so you're still doing it. So I'm still doing it, so I guess I liked it enough. Um, yeah, no, I after high school, and then I went off and studied. I did a, a university and college program. Yeah. And then when that finished, I moved to Toronto, and I kind of have been puddling away at pursuing it professionally. And how long have you been doing it professionally? I would say about two years since two I years. graduated. Um, and it's still in that emerging stages of getting to know the community, getting a sense of how everything works. Because there's only so much you learn in school and everything yeah. until you actually get out there and start doing it. And then you have a real sense of, and then you're constantly learning as it goes nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and also, did you take any special classes? I do. I did, I did a bit. I didn't actually do it that much at school. I did it outside of school when I was growing up. Um, and then obviously a university and college program was fairly specific training. It was a, a good blend of kind of academics in terms of the theory and actually reading plays. And then there was also the more studio based courses. So that's where we were doing voice and movement and improv and clown and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, kind of like what we did at Soul Express. Very similar to Soul Express. It's, it's, Those it's kind of fundamentals. Similar. Yeah. Um, and then since then, I've kind of kept up doing other forms of classes. So getting a bit more into camera stuff and um, that kind of thing ever since. Just because it's, you know, when you're out of a classroom setting, you realize how much you miss it, and you kind of, you can be self-aware to a certain point, but it's always good yeah. to have feedback. That's good. Actually, it is really good to get feedback. Yeah. Like, giving feedback and receiving the feedback and then actually doing it. Well, and exactly at Soul Express, we have both, like, Cheryl yes. and Matt giving feedback, but then we also have each other as peers. To, to help each other out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's true, which is part of the... Part of our program yeah. and, and our process, how we get things done. Yeah, 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 exactly. Knowing that many you have been in film, on TV, and performed in theater, which do you like best? It's hard to say. Theater's where it started, and that's where the majority of my experience lies. I've only done some TV since graduating from school. So there's still that kind of excitement with it. It's still kind of new and I don't really know. I'm, it's not as familiar and I like that about it. And there's also the huge difference of the amount of rehearsal time you get. So I kind of like it when you know turning up on set and the sort of anticipation you have about it. And it means it's very fresh and it's very instinctual, which I really like. Because in theater, when you rehearse to a certain point, it, sometimes yeah. it's hard to keep it fresh. Yes. That's not always there. And that's the point. You want to be comfortable. You want to know what you're doing. But what I like about the challenge of um, any sort of TV stuff I've done is that it's, it's, very, it's quite physical and you're just doing it in the moment, which is yeah. nice. Um, and I, but I think theater will always, that's where my heart will always be in many ways. So you, so you choose theater? If I had to choose one, yeah, yeah be, I would say be so. theater. Yes. Do you have yeah. a favorite, do you have a favorite theater play? A favorite theater play? That is out there today? I have two. 
I have two. Oh, so what are I, the two? I always say, I really like, there's a play called Harvey. It's from the early 20th century. It's mm -hmm. about a man who, um, it's an American play. It's about a man who has a friend that's a six foot tall rabbit, but nobody can see him. So that's, ah. that's essentially the whole plot. I won't say anything else. There's okay. a very good, there's a good movie. It is. Um, and then there's another play that I always say is kind of the, one of the ones that I saw and I thought that's what I want to do. And it's called Black Watch. I saw ah. it, it was by the National Theatre of Scotland and it's about um, a group of soldiers returning from Iraq and sort of uncovering that process. But it was a, there was a lot of physical theatre mm -hmm. through it and a lot of staging that at the age I saw it at, I just hadn't ever seen something like that before. And how did you like it? Oh, I loved it. I still think about it all the time. Oh. Yeah. Um, it's, I often think about it. It's a production I would see like in a drop of a hat if it came back. So. Me, I would love to see that in Scotland. Yeah. I'd love it, to go back and see it, see it, some theatre stuff there. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and as uh, I think we've, as we've talked about before, that is kind of yeah. influential in terms of my own interest in theater. Yeah. So, I was surprised to learn that you have honors in theater. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, it's, the, it's basically the name of my degree. So, oh, yeah. I did an interesting program in that it was a two-year college diploma and a four-year university degree. So, six years of education all condensed into four. And that was at the University of Toronto, their Mississauga campus, and Sheridan College in Oakville. So, uh, it was kind of, as I said, a real split. And my personality, I think, runs that way. I, I like books. I like being in the classroom. I like that kind of the, the arguments and I shouldn't say arguments. Yeah. The, it's opinionated conversation you can get into in, the, in a kind of educational yeah. setting that way. Um, but then you also have, you know, being physical and actually doing what you're doing kind of thing with studio courses. Um, so I had a great experience in that program and certainly came out with an awareness that I'm incomparable to what I had when I started at 18. And I mean, you think about any length, you know, four years of your life, you kind of forget just how much you progress and grow aside from whatever, whatever kind of education or experiences you're having in that sense. So, yeah. yeah. And then I, you know, I threw in the odd, yeah. you get the other experience of just having a university college experience of having True. the odd elective, you know, taking the course you don't really love. All of that was in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Same here with me with Soul Express. Yeah. I get that too. Yes, you get a little bit of you get all. You the, get a little bit of everything. Because we often talk about the work we're doing. Yes, we talk do. Talk about inspiration we're going to do, and then there are those moments where maybe we're doing things where we're sort of like, oh, I'm. Yeah. Well, is it break time yet? But always <laughs> necessary, right? You know. Yep. Yes. Yeah. We yeah. have a lot of people who do check their watches. <laughs> and they shouldn't be. And you know, I did that all throughout school. You always do that yeah. throughout school. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I do, but yeah. I don't. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I do sometimes, but. It can happen to anybody. It happens to anybody, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's part of our human life. Yeah. And we joke about it all the time there yeah. at Soul Express, I think. With your move to Toronto after graduating from the theater and drama studies program with a diploma in acting with high honors from Sheridan College and Honors BA with high dissection from the University of Toronto. Can you tell us more about it? It's been, it, it's, it's such a different experience. And that's the kind of fun thing. You can learn so much in school, but you don't really learn it until you actually get out there and try to get a feel for things. And certainly when you're in the city, it's a lot easier to sort of keep track of all the different shows coming up, different plays and different names and all of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think for me the biggest thing has just been reestablishing a sense of community because when you're in school you're working with the same group of people often every day on a mm -hmm. set schedule and then when you finally move and start and I think it's true of any profession when you get out there and you start actually doing it you're suddenly navigating a territory that you kind of forge for yourself yeah so that's been the biggest thing and I think for me what's kept me going is finding people and communities who motivate me and kind of continue even you know, if you get lost in yourself and kind of question what you're doing, you find people who are supportive and encouraging of that work, and you can keep kind of going through with it. And there's so much going on. Uh, Toronto's a great theater city, so there's always stuff going on and activities and to keep you going. Like yeah. what kind of activities? Well, there's classes, seeing theater, going to talks or lectures. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'll dare to say I'm a, I'm a fan of talkbacks and pre-show things. And there's... a kind of ongoing events and things and reading online. I do a lot of reading in terms of reviews or articles about artists and things in this community. Yeah, same here with me. <clears throat> same here with me. 
Because I do the same thing sometimes too. Yeah. Yeah, no, you have and, to be. And I do it through a solo express sometimes on my own. Yeah. But you you get to learn more from it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's you kind of are setting up school teaches you how you can kind of learn things in a sort of yeah. set way and then you can you can apply those own sort of learning strategies yeah. out in the real world in terms of to keep going. That's true. Yeah. Especially when you're teaching students even. Yes. Like yourself when you, when you're a student. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kind of facilitate for yourself. And I guess was that hard for for you as a student? Oh, I think so. Yeah, and nobody talks about it either. I feel like I graduated and I came out with skill sets, and then you finally, until you're there, you go, oh wait, what I do is up to me from this point on. Yes, it you is. You know, That's you don't you, you don't realize until you're out of it. Um, so it's always hard there. And you know what? I don't think I've ever totally recovered from it and gone, oh, I know what I'm doing now. I think that's just sadly what the rest of your life is like, you yeah, know? Same here with me. Yes. Yeah. You kind of just trudge along and there are different ways to keep it going. And, and that's true in, you know, it certainly applies in a professional setting too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Same with anybody Yeah. who are going to school and, and getting that. Yeah. What was it like to live in between Peterborough, Ontario and Edinburgh, Scotland? What did you ever think you would end up in Scotland? Yeah, so I, um, I grew up in Peterborough for the most part, but then yeah. because of my family, my dad is from Scotland, um, my mother went to school there and kept an apartment ever since, we would spend the summers there partly because of their own work. They both do research based in Scottish literature. So we would spend the summers there and I did a couple years of school there as well. And that was because Peterborough is a fairly small town, not particularly big. Edinburgh is the capital city. So that's when I went there for the summers, um, not only was I in a big city that, you know, has theater just like Toronto, but it was also when the Fringe Festival was. Yeah. So the first and the biggest Fringe Festival is there. So it's in the month of August, the, the amount of theater and art going on is really incredible. Um, so I always found that Peterborough was the place that I was able to do theater and participate in community and school productions. And then Edinburgh was the kind of city. I did some classes with schools when I was there, but most of it was that's where I saw things. And that's where I was exposed to the kind of theater that would never have come to Peterborough just because of the size and location of that city. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I, I think I always thought I would be in Canada for theater. Yeah. I, I love Edinburgh very much. I love the city. It's far more expensive to live there full time than it is in Toronto. Yeah. Um, and I think there is also something to speak to the fact that while I feel close to that culture in those cities, I don't think I ever really truly identify in a way with it that would make me feel like I could be part of that community. And I felt a lot yeah. of the work I saw there was really about the kind of ice struggling with that identity um, that I never felt I quite fit into. And to be honest with you, I'm not very good at a Scottish accent. Oh, and that really? Which, no, I'm not. I'm not. Oh. I, it's never been a skill set. I've never had an ear for it. That's actually in my blood. Is it in your blood? Well, it are you Scottish comfortable with that I'm, accent? I am from a Scottish background. You're from Scottish, see? That's... My grandmother from, was from Scotland. Yeah, yeah, and you've told me you've traveled there too, right? I did. Yeah. I didn't like the steep hills, the steep hills very much. <laughs> see, that's what I liked about it. I was, I was there again for the first time in a little while this past summer, and I, I run a lot, and I miss that variation. I have a painful reminder. Do you? Yeah. I still have it. You're still dragging yourself uphill sometimes? Yeah. yeah, I do sometimes. Yeah. And I heard you're going back to Peterborough for the holidays. I'm going to go back there. Yeah. yeah to yeah. see your family. I'll see my family. I don't think I'll see many hills, though. Oh, I see. It's pretty flat in Peterborough. Would it be, like, would it be snowing up there when you get up there? It should be. And in fact, it's usually more, it's usually more cold than Toronto. Yeah, 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 that's true. A little bit more snow. Nothing compared to Ottawa or anything yeah. like that, but it's, it's getting in that range. And I heard somewhere that you took piano lessons. I did, yeah. I, and, and, and how did that go for you? You know, I complained. I started at a young age. I, my mother wasn't going to sign me up for it, but my sister did it, and then I insisted upon doing it. And I complained for many years about it, how much I hated it, how much I hated practicing. Uh, but I finished right until high school, and I remember, I remember when my sister decided to stop doing it, and the question ah. came up of, would I stop doing it? And I was stubborn enough to prove my sister wrong and my mother wrong that I continued right through. Oh, good for you. Yes, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I don't know how good those sources of motivation are, but nonetheless. Um, and you know what? Now that I don't have to play all the time, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that I don't have that skill set anymore. It's kind of like a language, unless you're doing it all the time and practicing, it just yeah. goes away. 
And now I, I kind of am amazed at what I used to be able to play. But, yeah. you know, I have a keyboard. I can fiddle around. Yeah, true. So. I used to play piano once. Did you? Yeah. But I sucked at it. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't. I'm sure you didn't. I had a teacher once. Yeah, yeah. Where I, I, I used to um, live up near Kingswood. Okay. And we used to have a, uh, have a piano and I had a teacher. And I didn't really do really good, but it turned out okay. Did you like practicing? I did, but it it was okay. It was okay. It was fun. Okay. To do it, and was it hard for you to, to take piano? It was just. It was always practicing. It was always, always practicing. practicing. Um, I don't know why. You know, it's not like the, it is kind of maybe a mathematical, mathematical or logical aspect mm -hmm. of piano, and I loved that. I loved theory, um, and I liked. I liked the pieces I was playing. I mean, my teachers were always very open. You know, you have to choose within a kind of set section, especially yeah. when I went through the Royal Conservatory program, so you have to choose certain pieces from a certain book. Yeah. But my teachers were always very open to me playing whatever I liked best, you know. But I have to say I hated, I don't know if you ever had to do any um, ear training. So if someone oh, were to I clap. I never had that. Oh, Oh, that was the other thing I hated. So if I were to clap a melody and then you would have to clap it back, or if you were to play yeah. something on the piano and then you had to play it back, I, I hated it. I've never had an ear for it. Uh, I was always wildly guessing. Yeah. So that was, that was the trickiest thing. And again, you can only get better at it if you practice. Was it hard practicing? No, I'll be honest. It, it wasn't. It was my attitude, I think, as much as oh, anything. Oh, I see. I had a very nice attitude. I, yeah, I had a nice piano. I had time. I just... Getting on that piano branch is hard. Uh, that well, that's good. That yeah. um, did you learn? Did you learn on your own? to have a teacher with you? I had a teacher. You had, you had a teacher. Yeah, I had one teacher for most of my piano career, and then in high school I switched to another. Ah, and, um, and how did that work out? That was good. I really liked. You know, I liked my first piano teacher, um, but I think I needed a change at that point in order to keep myself motivated to keep going. Um, and my mom is a good piano player too, so she was ah. always around to, to help. That, that's really good because all mothers are can be around to help our children to do to become successful at something that we'd love to do. Yes, yeah, they can nag as well. They can nag. Na too, the nagging is useful though, right? The, it, yes, it is yeah. useful, <laughs> and we do take, but but we do take that on as a feedback. Yes, of course, of course. Yeah. Like we always get sometimes. Yeah, we just don't admit it though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, Madeline, as a professional theater artist, can you tell us a special story about your experience? We were talking about this earlier, and I realized how hard it is to sort of. Do you of have a favorite a story? Favorite one. Okay. If I have to choose, if I were to choose one now. Um, I was telling you, I wrote my first play this past year. Yes. And that was, again, as we could say, like my mother in piano, I had a friend who was very encouraging that I just try writing a play. I, I've done a lot of writing for other jobs and things, yeah. not, not dramatic writing, more journalistic stuff. So he decided to kind of encourage me and push me, and it made me realize how important it is to have those people in your life and also just what a difference that kind of outside motivation can be. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I ended up acting in it. I think I always wanted to do that. But there was something about remembering what it's like to have people to give you the voice and the facilities, and the encouragement to do so, and then what you can come up with at the end of the day. Because um, you kind of take for granted that those, you just forget that those people are out there and what they can offer you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I heard you, you did a play this here at the Fringe. I did, yeah, so I did. Called, I'm sorry. Yes. And, Matt, how, and how did that work out? It was, it was a lot of fun. We, we managed to make our money back, which became yeah. a fear. That's the fun of the fringe, right? You, yeah. you put your money in, you hope you'll get it back, and you hope yeah. you'll get some audience members out there as well. And that certainly was the case. And it was a lot of fun to rehearse. Uh, we, we joked all the time that maybe we never took ourselves seriously enough. But uh, we were able to f have a show at the end of the day, which was good. Yeah. And certainly left me at the end not scared to write more theater. I think it was a positive enough experience that I was happy to keep doing more. And, um, and obviously at the Fringe, we were also doing yeah. a Soul Express show yes, at the same time. Yes, uh, Seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it hard for you to do doing two plays? It was a busy few weeks, I will ah. say for sure. But they were great. They were, they were very complimentary of the other. Seasons yeah. was a very physical show. Yeah. Uh, and a lot more about sort of movement. And it was a large ensemble. Yes, the it, other, was. it was. Yes. Yeah, so the other play, it was just myself and one other actor. 
and it was a lot of text. Yeah. So it was great to go between the two worlds because they were kind of entirely different. Yeah. You know? And my was your role in Seasons. Oh, Seasons. We all had so many roles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We you were sitting under the side. tree. I was, yeah. I was reading, a... Reading in the book. Yeah, I was a variety. And, and how was that for you? Oh, it was so much fun. And you know what? It was fun, too, to see, to do those scenes yes. and remember wh what they had been, oh, six months ago because we created yeah. everything, right? Yeah, we did. So we were devising. So I'm trying to think. I always remember Agnes, who's one of the other members at Soul Express, mm -hmm. and yeah. I had a scene at the beginning where we were two children in a daycare. Yeah. And that scene just came out of improvising one day. And then yeah, to did. see where it went through, and we just kept rehearsing it and kind of built and added to it, and it became part of the larger structure of how we had those one characters kind of going through life and their friendship changing. Yeah. So while I played the younger version, you played the older version right at the I end, did. right? So I did, as the older version Yeah. Of a, of a man looking back on his life. Yeah. Did you have any role models growing up and what inspired you most about them? You know, I always have my parents, obviously. I had, I would have weird fascinations for a little while. So for a while, I used to be really into visual art. That's why I got into the arts to begin with. And I had a fascination with Van Gogh for a long time. I don't know why, but I loved his artwork. I read everything about him. And then it was Houdini for a little while. And I would say towards the end of high school, it was Julia Child. Ah. So I had very eclectic kind of weird role models. Um, I have no idea what they have in common. If I were to go with Julia Child at the end, I think there was something about her being kind of opinionated and a bit, a bit odd and a bit kind of an outlier. And also just the idea of how she was a famous, she was a chef, well, I don't, I don't want to say a chef, but she was sort of that, mm -hmm. the original celebrity chef. Oh, I see. And she brought French cooking to America in the 1950s. And I, what's the story about her is she was, you know, a, maybe in her 40s when she came out, when she mm -hmm. discovered a love of cooking and learned everything she could about it and then brought it back and wrote a book and eventually ended up doing her own TV show and that kind of thing. Yeah. And so I always admired the work ethic and also the fact that there were no circumstances that meant she wasn't born in a family of cooks. She didn't have, you know, she wasn't from a young age. That wasn't a thing. But because she worked hard and had an interest in it, yeah. she was able to pursue it. So I think that for me always stood out as a quality I hoped to kind of emulate. That's good. That actually, that was very edu educational for me to find this out. Yeah. About you, and I'm very glad you shared that with me today. Oh, you're welcome. Aside from your acting career in theater, mm -hmm. I understand that you are also a volunteer with Lars Toronto Soul Express. Yes which is a performance arts program. How did that came about? And how long were you, have you been there? What is your most favorite and rewarding part in your role at Soul Express? So about, I'm gonna say three or four years ago, I actually wanted to improve my oral French. Yes. And I had a summer, and a French professor had heard of Jean Vanier and suggested, oh, maybe you could look into living in a large community in France. And that way you would have a very practical way of improving your French. Though I quickly realized I wasn't even capable of filling out the application form. My French was so poor at that point. Mm, yeah. Nonetheless, I kept it in the back of my mind. And when I moved to Toronto, I've always volunteered and I wanted something else to do in the city. Um, and I had um, a friend from university who volunteered in the houses. So she reminded me again of this organization, yeah. and I thought, oh, I should follow up. <laughs> so I went and met Kim, who's the volunteer coordinator, yeah, who you which know. I, which I know. Yep. And when I talked to Kim and talked about my interests and what I was doing professionally, Soul Express was a natural fit. So that was about two years ago now. It'll wow. be two years in January that I started. And I've gone in, I go in every Monday with the, um, the acting the acting Yes, group. you do. Yeah. yeah. I've done the occasional Wednesday when there's the visual arts component. Yes. Yeah. When someone is away, you come, sometimes you come in and fill in. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I always say the most rewarding part, when I, just like when I was speaking earlier to moving <clears throat> to Toronto after going to school, is just yeah. the sense of community <clears throat> that it has. Um, you know, always having that same group of people that you come to every Monday is very settling when you're in a new town or city, I suppose. And also as an artist, 
we're generating new material all the time and creating work as a group. And I don't think I've had, even when I was going to school with a set group of people, we weren't necessarily generating new material. We were, you know, using scenes or adapting material. So it's great to have a company of artists that you work with who, you know, it's always, it's based in that kind of original devise world. And you get to know each other very well and yes. as working as an ensemble, that's essential, you know? Yeah. Um, and Seasons was a great, I came right at the time when Seasons was kind of starting. We yeah. had a bit of a workshop at the end of that year. So it's been a lot of fun to ride that process out. And then kind of now we're at that transition point, we'll be starting something new. Yeah, we're yeah. sure we're doing something new in the new year. Mm -hmm. And now we're coming back with it. Yeah. We were, in, <clears throat> we were invited back yeah. to the French again next year. Yeah. Which we would get into in the new year. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little nerve wracking. Yeah. But it's exciting. Yeah. It will be exciting when that time comes. Yeah. As a woman with an amazing and exciting acting career in theater, what words of wisdom would you give to those people wishing to pursue an acting career in theater in your profession? It's a mighty question. I, and I always, I always think like, I like to give advice, but I don't have the ultimate word on anything I have to say, no matter what sort of experience I have. I think it's just a curiosity. That's what, that's been my ultimate motivation all the way through. You know, even if yeah. I've spoken to groups or people I've been around, curiosity is the thing that's really sparked and kept me going. And I think being in tune to that and knowing and following it where it leads you and also where it might not lead you. Yeah. Um, and knowing, because I think the things I d I've done best have been the things I've been really passionate about. And it's been hard to maybe let other things go, but I've realized at a certain point that that's not ultimately where I've been passionate about. So I think once you get in tune to that curiosity, and I don't, I don't think I'm in, entirely in tune to it yet. I think that's a process yeah. I'll be crafting all the way through my career and even in my personal life. Um, that's ultimately where I've kind of found my own success. Uh, that's Actually, that was very successful to learn that from you. Mm -hmm. It was a huge success for you. And was it hard trying to get through all that? Oh, you know what? Once you're through it, it doesn't seem that bad, right? And yeah. I, you know what? The other thing I would say, too, is I always like to reflect back with a sense of humor. Um, and maybe that's not the best approach all the time, but I think that's no. what helps it seem not quite so hard is sort of seeing some sort of light and thinking, well, whoever's crafting my life has a, is a is, you know, they have an interesting mind, you know? Yes. I like to think that even when something a bit bizarre or bad happens, I sort of attribute it to a fact of like, well, that's, that was a good, that was a good chapter today, you know? Yeah. Whoever that person is. Um, and I think that that gives me a bit of perspective to get me through any sort of challenges. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. And speaking of success, I would like to say success you had a very successful acting career and thank you for coming on to the debated channel and keeping it well with nick and we wish you all the successes in the near future and thank you for you guys for watching to keeping well with nick today and staying tuned with the debated channel and please subscribe to our channel on YouTube and stay in tune on Facebook and Twitter and other social media networks that are out there today and stay tuned for those upcoming updates and news on those networks. And thank you for watching and have a safe and happy Christmas holidays. Thanks for watching.